السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر. الله أكبر الله أكبر. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان لكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان استك حديث كتاب الله عز وجل احسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدثاتها وكل ما حدث في الاسلام بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الحمد لله رب العالمين لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد ونعمتك لك للملك لا شريك له سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الحمد لله رب العالمين النعمة الإسلام على هذا النعمة and blessing العظيم this great blessing that Allah Azza wa Jal has endowed us with ولا الحمد to be alive and well at this blessed time period ولا الحمد and being blessed with the opportunity to gain the blessing the barakat the maghfira the forgiveness and the kabul al-amal salih and the acceptance of our deeds Amin. In these blessed days of Dhul Hijj, these blessed first days of Dhul Hijj, Walalham, as we all know that many people have passed away in this year and prior to this time that we're in right now, for various reasons, people have been shot down while trying to visit or coming from visiting their loved ones. Innocent people have been killed in the United States, Canada. In America, people have been killed or dying due to different reasons, due to COVID, and the list goes on and on and on. Inna lillahi wa inna lirajoon. Well, alhamd, we have to praise and thank Allah that we're alive at this moment in time, during the first ten days of Dhul Hijj. That regardless of what happened, and what is happening, and what will continue to happen. We have to praise Allah Azza wa Jal that we have been endowed with an opportunity to gain the rewards of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, 
during these first 10 days of the Al-Hijj. And nothing should prevent us from doing so. So today, with Alhamd, I want to start by reminding us that in times of fitna, we have to increase in our good deeds. We should not decrease, but we should look for ways and means to increase in our amal al-salih. We should hasten to maximize our good deeds. In these 10 days, these first 10 days of the hitch should be to catapult us, to let us go forward into the rest of the year, looking forward to doing good deeds. Why? For the sake of Allah, Taala. first and foremost, there's one Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal, he swears by these days, by saying, wal fajr wal ash. Allah Azza wa Jal, he gives the wa, he starts by saying the wa al-qasam, by giving an oath, by swearing by the dawn. And the oath of this morning is referring to the morning of the day of Nahar, the day of sacrifice. Meaning the night, the 10 days, referring to the first 10 days of Dhul Hijj. Allah Azza wa Jal, He swears by the Fajr, Wal Fajr, Wal, wal As. Allah Azza wa Jal, He swears by the, the Shams, Wal Shams, Wal Qamar, by the sun, the moon, the time. Lillah Mithil Al Ala. Allah Azza wa Jal, for Allah Azza wa Jal is the best example. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He can make the qasam. He can swear by whatever He wants from His makhluqat. Well, alhamd. We have to know that this, my dear Basalam Niman, this today, my dear Basalam Niman, this moment that we're in, this time period that we're in, is a great blessing. It's a great blessing. And we are encouraged to do as many good deeds as humanly possible. What does this mean? If we are alive and well, if we are alive and well at this moment in our lives, we should not, as they say, leave any stone unturned. We should look, we should be on the search and look out for any way we can do good deeds that are pleasing to Allah, to Barak Ta'ala, like fasting, like giving charity, charity, am, sadaqah, by making adhkar, Saying Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Be frequent in remembering Allah, in words of remembrance and gratitude, and be looking for ways in which we can increase in our amal salih. We know, ma'asif shadid, that many people will be deprived of gaining the good deeds in these first ten days of Dhul Hijj. Ma'asif shadid. There's a hadith. And see Sahih Muslim, an authority of Abu Radha Anhu, who has stated, Hasten, Badiru, Il Amala Saliha. Be hasty, be in a rush at doing good deeds before a time comes of fitna, before a time of fitna comes upon us that will cover us like a dark night, like the dark, darkest part of the night. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explains that darkness that can cover a human being by saying that a believer, listen very closely, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said a man will go to bed at night as a believer and wake up as a disbeliever. This is the times that we're living in. And he went on to say that a man can wake up in the morning with iman, with faith, and by the time he puts his head down on his pillow at night, he will lay down on his bed as a disbeliever in Allah. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Many Muslims, my dear Salam Iman, are confused regarding the fadl, the excellence, and the magnificence of these first 10 days of Dhul Hijj. So, let me explain or give some faida, some of the benefits of these first 10 days of Dhul Hijj. There is an amazing hadith. I want to start by quoting an amazing hadith, which is Muntafiq al-Ali, Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, on the Torah of Ibn Abbas, Radul Anhumah, Ajma'in, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, 
who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu he said, Samita Rasulullah sallallahu he heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu say, Ma min ayyamin, there is no days, ma isim ishara, there is no days, in the 365 days of the year, ma min ayyam, there is no days, there is no days in which good deeds are more beloved to Allah Azawajal than in these first 10 days of Dhul Hijj. The Sahaba, may Allah Azawajal be pleased with them, they were perplexed. Usually, when you hear the Prophet Wasallam give a statement, they would be quiet and accept. But they had to ask. They had to ask. They said, Wallah, jihad, Allah. Not even jihad, fighting, struggling in the path of Allah, because the Sahaba were always encouraged to sacrifice, giving the ultimate sacrifice for the sake of Allah. The Prophet said, Wallah, jihad, Allah. Not even jihad, which might cause you to lose your life for the sake of Allah. Ila rajalan. Except in the case of a man. Kharaju. He left with his mal and his self and his nafs. Wulam yurja bidhaad mishay. Muqam Except for the man who left with his wealth and his self and he did not return with anything. There's another hadith in the Musa of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal where he said, Sallallahu He said, There is no days that are more magnificent in the eyes of Allah than these days. And more beloved to Allah than these first 10 days of Dhul Hajj. So we should increase in our saying of Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Walla ilallah, Wallahu Akbar, La Hawla Walakwatullah Billah. We should increase in saying these things because these are the most beloved phrases to Allah. Very easy. The hadith. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kalimatan, Khafifatan. على لسان وثقيلتان بالميزان وحبيبتان لرحمن سبحان الله بحمده سبحان الله العظيم أقوم خاص الله السلام There are two statements that are light on the tongue and heavy on the scales and they are more beloved they are very beloved to the most merciful الرحمن سبحان الله وبحمده Glory and magnificent is to Allah. And all praise due to Allah. And subhanallah al-Azim. So my dear Prophet Salaam Iman. These days are so magnificent to Allah. Why? Because they also have within it. The Yawm al-Arafah. The day of the great standing. And this is symbolic for many reasons. To remind us of Yawm al hash When we're all going to be risen up out of our graves. And we're going to all rush to one place and the hujaj may Allah azawajal accept from them their hujaj and we know that this year we will not have people coming from all over the world it will be a special year this year is a very interesting year indeed and we have to accept that but this is from the mashiyat Allah this is from the qadr of Allah this is from the will and plan of Allah azawajal that only the local people will be making hajj Regardless of that, we have an opportunity to gain the blessing and the rewards. Yom al Arafah is a tremendous day indeed, my dear Prophet Salam Niman. That Allah Azza wa Jal, Yunazil, He comes down from His throne. Allah Azza wa Jal, Yunazil, He comes down from His throne in a manner which befits His majesty. And He looks at the people at the day of Arafah. And he says to the malaika, what do these people seek and desire? Allah Akbar. We know of the hadith of Abu Radha Anhu, which is Sahih Sahih Bukhari, that 
the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that <coughs> our Lord, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, Allah Azza wa Jal, glorified and magnificent is He. He comes down during the last, Thulath al-Akhir al-Layal. Every night, Allah Azza wa Jal, He comes down, He nazil. He comes down in a manner which befits His majesty. In the last, during the last third of every night. And He's asking, who is seeking forgiveness of me? Who is asking for something of me? And this goes on and on and on that Allah was just asking. Who woke up to pray and is asking of me for my forgiveness so that I may forgive them? And this continues until the break of dawn. Allah Akbar. So my dear Prophet Iman, this coming day of Arafah is a magnificent day. Not only for the Hujjaj, those people who are standing on the Mount of Arafah, who will be standing on the Mount of Arafah, bi'idhnillah, but also for us, bi'idhnillah. This day, my dear Salaam, that is coming, that we should be looking forward to, by doing good deeds. How do we look forward to that day? By doing good deeds, praying more, giving more sadaqat, Making more adhkar by saying subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa la akbar. By doing these things in the hopes that these deeds will catapult us, will bring us to that day of Arafah. Because this day is a magnificent day. For those of us who are unaware, is that Allah Azawajal had perfected our deen on that day. Allah Azawajal says in Surah Ma'idah, Verse number three. Al yom admanta lakum dinakum. Wa admantum alaykum ni'mati. Wa raditu lakum al-islam dinam. That blessed day of Arafah, Allah revealed this ayah to the Messiah of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Surah Ma'idah, verse number three. Which the majority of the scholars say was the last verse revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a few months before his death. Hajjat al Wada. His farewell pilgrimage that Allah said, on this day I have completed the deen. I have completed my favor upon you and I have chosen Islam as your religion. I am pleased with Islam as your religion. So the ninth day, the coming day, the ninth of Dhul Hijj is a tremendous day for us to mark the blessing and the completeness of our deen. On that day, Umar ibn Khattab was with the Prophet ﷺ. When this verse was being revealed to the Prophet ﷺ, he started to cry. And we know of the magnificence of Umar ibn Khattab. That the Prophet ﷺ said that if Umar ibn Khattab walked on one, one wall, they walked on one side of the road, the shaitan would walk on the other side of the road. This is the strength and the fiqh of his iman. When this ayah was revealed, Umar ibn Khattab, he started to weep profusely. He started to cry. The Prophet Sallallahu he asked, Ya Ibn Khattab, what makes you cry? He said, this day, our deen is becoming complete. And nothing that reached its completeness unless it will reach a point of decline. The Prophet Sallallahu he replied by saying, Sadaq. Umar Sadat, you have spoken the truth, Ya Umar, you have spoken the truth. Look at how these blessings have descended upon us. Look at how we have been blessed with a complete deen, a complete way of life, as opposed to the other adyan, the other religions that have many books and call it one book. They have many books from different different eras, and they call it a perfect, a complete book. And one part of the book contradicts the other part of the book. La hawla wa la quwata la billah. We, wallah alhamd, have been blessed with the Quran in its entirety. It came down piece by piece to the Prophet Wasallam, and we have it. And nothing has been tampered with, and nothing can be adulterated within it. Wallah alhamd. We are in no need of anyone in our ummah or outside of our ummah to try and adulterate our deen by innovating in it, 
any forms of bid'ah, heresy, innovation. We don't need any of that. Alham. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he left us on a clear white road. As he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that we have left you. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have left us on a white, clear white road. Its night is like its day. No one goes astray from it except they are astray. Alhamdulillah, I mean, for the imma of the Salaf, that they would say, Mathalan Imam Uzai, for example, one of the great Imams of the Salaf, Imam Uzai, he would say, Aspiran nafsik ala sunnah. Make your nafs, your soul, content with the sunnah. And stop what are people before you stopped. Because they would stop upon ilm. Another excellent example is that in the time of the Prophet this hadith is narrated on Jabir ibn Abdullah, he said that, there's an incident that occurred to Umar Khattab that he had attained some pages of the Torah in Arabic. And he went to the Prophet Wasallam reciting some of these pages of the Torah with excitement, with exuberance. And say, well, Mishra of Allah, this is talking about you. This is bearing witness to you, to you coming. One of Ansar man, an Ansari man said, Woe to you, Ya Ibn Khattab. Look at the face of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at his face. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's face was becoming red. His face was red with anger. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Woe to you, Ibn Khattab. He said, don't listen and don't take anything from the Ahl Kitab. They will not do anything except lead you astray. Subhanallah. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not only said that, but he went on to say, if Musa Alayhi Salam were alive today, he would have no choice but to follow me. On the Khattab, he repeated, Ravitu Billahi Rabban, wa bi Islam Adinin, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Nabiyan. He kept repeating this, Ravitu Billahi Rabban, wa bi Islam Adinin, wa bi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Nabiyan. He kept on repeating this until he felt the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's anger went down and dissipated. That I am pleased with Allah as my Lord and Islam as my religion, my way of life, and Muhammad Islam as our prophet and messenger. May Allah Azawajal help us to maximize in the blessings and the barakat and the maghfirah and forgiveness of these first 10 days of Dhul Hijj. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Bismillah. Salatu salam ala Rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sallam wa tabi huda wa ba'd. To end off, my dear Salam Iman, on the virtues of these first blessed ten days of Dhul Hijj. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, Allah akbar, wallah alhamd. That we're alive. We have to give thanks to Allah that we're alive and well. We're alive and well enough to do good deeds. In these 10 days of Dhul Hijj, as we mentioned from the Sunnah, that these coming days have within it Yom Al Arafah, the ninth of Dhul Hijj. Well, Allah Jal, He descends on the day of Arafah, looking at the who are standing on the Mount of Arafah. And we also have from the Sunnah that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that there are no days that are better, more beloved to Allah. Then, Hadi Ayam Ash, in these 10 days of Dhul Hijj that we're in. Why is that? Because there's a hadith on the authority of Qatata who narrates that the Prophet Islam said that fasting on the day of Arafah for those who are not performing Hajj, which is for us, expiates two years since. Sena Madi, the last year and the coming year sin. We have two years of sins that can be removed from our record if we just fast one day. One day. So my dear Salam Iman, <clears throat> we shouldn't forget to fast on that coming day of Arafah, which is this coming Thursday. 
which is this coming Thursday. If we haven't already, we should make the intention to slaughter, to offer a sacrifice, qurbani, ud'iyah, for the sake of Allah. For the sake of Allah. We should give some a portion of that to the poor, to the needy, and also eat from it, and feed your family from it, and your friends from it. And we should make the intention to do more good deeds. Do more good deeds. Make more adhkar. Make more saying of subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha wa la wa la hawla wa quwata la billah. Give more charity. Wa la ilaha wa la wa la lies our success. Amin, amin, amin. Inna Allah wa malaikatu sallu ala nabi. Ya ayiladina amanu. Sallu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad